Have you ever wondered whether it was possible to 3D print your own snare drum at home? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I built this very drum, and I'm gonna show you what it sounds like. So to start off with, I'm a drummer. I used to run a business building drums and about six months ago, I got my hands on my first 3D printer. So naturally it wasn't too long before I started wondering what sort of drum related things I could 3D print and the thought occurred that I could potentially print a drum. So I started looking around on Thingiverse and I came across a design by Drums and Droids. I'll link that down below. And I wanted to shout out Drums and Droids here because if you look at their design, you'll see that mine is very clearly inspired by theirs. So I want to give them credit and thanks for designing their snare drum in the first place. So as I mentioned earlier, I used to run a business building drums and it's something that I really love doing. So this project was really rewarding for me because I haven't had the reason really to open up Fusion 360 design something and then go and build it since my business closed down. It was also kind of hilarious to me to just be able to pull perfectly rounded parts off the 3D printer and with relatively minimal effort have a finished drum shell. For comparison, I used to build steam bent drum shells, so I would have to go to great lengths to make a stiff and flat material into a round one, then I would have to go to even greater lengths to make sure that that shell was stable and dimensionally accurate. So it was a super welcome relief just pulling parts off the printer and assembling them like some kind of Meccano set. But anyway, that's enough about me. Let's jump into Fusion 360 and take a look at the design. So I just wanted to mention this video is about the alpha version of my 3D printed snare drum. I have come up with an updated design based on some of the things I've learned designing this one. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to do an updated video about that. However, let's jump in and I'll show you what's going on with the alpha version. So the first thing you'll notice is that there are a number of distinct pieces that are all joined together to build up the shell. The bearing edges and the shell body are separated into different pieces. And I'll go into those a bit more in a moment. If I give the model a spin, you can see that all of the holes that I'm going to need to mount all of the hardware for the drum are already designed into the pieces. And there is an air vent there as well. I've also designed the bearing edges and snare beds into the pieces. Okay, so that's the sort of basic overview of the shell. If I hide a couple of the pieces now, you'll be able to see how they all join together. Okay, and with those pieces hidden, you can see that all of the pieces are interlocking with one another in some way. The bearing edge pieces have a bit of a mortise and tenon joint going on. Same with the shell body pieces here and the bearing edge pieces interlock onto the shell body pieces with these sort of tabs. Again, basically a mortise and tenon. And you'll probably notice these holes going through the mortise and tenon joints on the shell body pieces. Attaching all of the lugs through these holes means that the main shell body is all held together without the need for any adhesive. And since we're not using any adhesion, that means that the bearing edge pieces can all be freely removed and perhaps replaced with other bearing edge pieces with different bearing edge profiles or snare beds printed into them. You could even change out the shell body pieces themselves. You could print out a snare strainer piece with different holes for another snare strainer, for instance, and swap that out. You could experiment with different vent holes sizes or different amount of vented pieces on the shell or perhaps you have a piece that has holes for an internal dampener there are many possibilities with this design and it's quite flexible and having the pieces all separated like this also makes for better results straight off the printer because the bearing edge pieces are separate to the shell body pieces they can be printed with the bearing edge facing upwards which means there's no support material attached to them to hold them onto the printer bed if you were to design your shell like this, for instance, with the bearing edges and the shell all in one piece, then you'd end up with a bunch of support material down here on the bearing edges, which just means that after this is printed, I'm going to have to remove all of that and potentially damage the quality of the print. It's a lot more work and it's going to be a lower quality end result. Now, unfortunately, I decided to make this video after I'd printed the drum shell, so I don't have any footage of it on the printer back there but I'm using a gray marble PLA filament from 3D Phillies, which really helps to hide some of the more obvious remnants of 3D printing. It's not overly glossy, and it has these nice dark specks throughout the material, which really goes a long way to hiding the layer lines. And for the bearing edges, I've just used a regular black gloss PLA. So now we've seen how the drum is designed, I've prepared a little build montage to show how it's assembled. Enjoy.
So, some final thoughts about the alpha version of my 3D printed snare drum. First thing I noticed when I took it to a gig was just how loud this was. I actually had to swap this out for the gig because in soundcheck, the sound engineer asked me to play quieter due to how loud this drum was. The second thing about this drum that surprised me was the sensitivity. I mean, take a look at this. So you can see how close to the edge there I'm able to get a response out of the snare wires. I'm fairly certain this is mostly a function of the bearing edge profile and the snare bed profile. And admittedly, the snare beds are something that I spent a lot of time working on when I was running my business. So I reused that design, but it still surprised me the amount of sensitivity I was able to get out of a 3D printed drum. One thing that I found kind of disappointing about the drum was the cross stick sound. You can probably hear in the live demo when I was playing that bossa nova beat with the cross stick. It just kind of got lost in, in the mix of the other drums and it's not like I'm pulling any studio magic here, that's just kind of how it sounded in the room as well. It was relatively inaudible and it didn't feel very good to play. And I'm fairly certain that's due to the drum shell not having very much density and also more likely than that, the infill that's used by 3D printers creates these little air pockets and that's extremely good at stopping energy flowing. So I think we're just not hearing the shell project. It's not really able to project, which serves it in some ways, but definitely not in the cross stick domain. Obviously, everyone has their own opinions when it comes to how a drum sounds and how they want it to sound. You might be watching this thinking this drum sounds absolutely terrible. Fair enough. Personally though, I think that it sounded quite good when I had the snare wires loosened and I had something dampening the drum. That's sort of a go-to setting that I like to use on my snare drums and then I will tighten and loosen the snare tension to get different tonal characteristics for different songs if I need to. With that said, don't think it sounded as great as it could at higher tensions. It kind of choked up a bit, but it does still cut through the mix and it's got a nice dry and punchy sound. So it performs its job as a snare drum. And maybe that's the most surprising thing about the drum. I actually do use it. It does its job as a snare drum. I've played it on stage. I've played it in recordings. It has real utility to me as a drummer. I honestly didn't expect that from a 3D printed snare drum, but it was a very pleasant surprise and this whole project was really a very pleasant surprise. It just was great to be able to design something, build something and be able to use that thing and find pleasure and enjoyment out of that. So I hope that you found this video useful. It's my first video ever on YouTube. Thank you if you made it this far. I'll include links for the 3D printed snare drum down below as well as any other useful links that I'm might have mentioned throughout the video and uh, yeah thank you for joining me until next time